Video games have always been an expensive hobby, however it is a lot more accessible to get into today, and it's better than being in a drug, so take your wins where you can. The video game industry itself has boomed into a multi-billion dollar industry, where you even have studios now being sold for $68 billion, so it's not surprising to see games gone up in price, but they haven't always been as cheap as you think. In 1985, the release of the Nintendo Entertainment System, or the NES, marked a pivotal moment in gaming history. Priced at around $200, it was a considerable investment for many households. However, when adjusted for inflation, that $200 translates to around $600 in today's economy, surpassing the cost of modern consoles like the Xbox Series S. During the NES era, the popular games were around $45 to $50 on average, but could surprisingly be up in the 60s and I think even 70s which once again doesn't sound bad to calculate for inflation. Can you imagine spending around $130 to play Super Mario 3 or Street Fighter 2010? Fast forward to the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube era as gaming technology advanced, so too did production costs, leading to a gradual increase in prices where most games are around that $50 price tags and really wouldn't reach that standard 60 price tag until the PS3 and Xbox 360 came out. Then we go into the mid-2000s with Xbox One, PS4, and Nintendo Switch, and games are pretty much always $60. But then the question is, is if the game is actually even worth the $60? Games, for example, would you rather have like Red Dead 2 or Marvel Adventures? Both $60, but Marvel Adventures was an absolutely dumpster fire. Or would you rather have a recycled 2K sports game or The Last of Us Part 2? Both at $60. Then the advent of indie gaming disrupted traditional notions of value and quality in the gaming industry. Titles like Binding of Isaac, Hotline Miami, Lethal Company, and Hades priced under that $30, $40 price tag demonstrated that engaging gameplay and innovative design could trump high production costs and outperform AAA studios. This happened with Lethal Company, I think, selling like way more copies than Call of Duty when that came out. This realization prompted people to re-evaluate their purchasing habits, questioning whether a game's price tag accurately reflected its entertainment value. Meanwhile, the rise of free-to-play games and live service games introduced new monetization models such as battle passes and microtransactions, supply drops, whatever. Games like Fortnite, Apex Legends, and Fall Guys capitalized on this trend, redefining how players engage with content and driving revenue through ongoing engagement rather than upfront purchases. It also raised concerns about the possible exploitive behaviors of gaming experiences and the erosion of consumer trust. The prices have always fluctuated and there's never really been a set standard, but now in the last two years it seems the new standard pricing games have gone from 60 to 70 and now there's just so many live service games out there that shove microtransactions down your face, which a lot of people aren't happy about for understandable and not so understandable reasons. I personally don't mind spending $70 for games of high quality like Red Dead 2, God of War, The Last of Us, Tears of the Kingdom, and Spider-Man because these are high quality games that offer a lot of story and polished content. As games continue to advance graphically and get larger in size, they're becoming more expensive to make. Studios also need to hire more employees to finish these larger titles so they need to find new ways to make more profit. Story games like God of War aren't going to shove a battle pass system because it does not work in this type of game. So the only way they can really make more profit is to either create DLC or just upcharge the game. And that's kind of what God of War Ragnarok did. They launched it at 70 but then we got free DLC and I think that's a win. I have nothing to complain about that. The problem is how the $70 price point reflects corporate greed rather than a commitment to quality unfinished or buggy releases such as Starfield and Redfall and even Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were evidence of a growing disconnect between developers and consumers. Furthermore, sports franchises like Madden and NBA 2K have now started charging $70 for incremental updates and recycled content with just a roster change, and they try to justify this by making bundles like a cross-gen bundle giving you the old and current-gen versions. And then there's games like Escape from Tarkov, who just announced a $250 DLC or PvE experience rather than a free update or maybe making you spend like $20. Kill the Justice League charges $70 for a live service game that requires you to be online constantly when all it is is a six hour long repetitive story. 
Even Call of Duty, a franchise I used to love, follows the same model, charging seventy dollars for a reskin of a game, then shows battle passes and microtransactions down the user's throat. Gotham Knights charges seventy dollars for the base game, but is so bad that it's usually on sale for fifteen dollars, and the deluxe version is ninety dollars, giving you a few extra outfits that now even more studios are starting to follow, where their deluxe editions. Like a hundred bucks, like Skull and Bones. Surrounding game pricing extends beyond new releases, and now ports, remasters, and remakes are being upcharged. While some remakes like Persona 3 Reload, Resident Evil 4, and the Mario RPG remake justify their $70 price tag with um, a lot of improvements like new animations, updated art, additional content, and new stories, others just feel like cash grabs aimed at exploiting nostalgic sentiment. It's like Game Pass, PlayStation Plus, EA Access, and Ubisoft Plus being shoved down our throats any time you load up your console and go to the digital marketplace. These are great services for people that just want a large catalog of games to try for a monthly fee. And I personally use Game Pass for several years now, and I love the service. But to me, it just seems like those services are all I see now, rather than an actual good quality game with a fair price tag. Half the time, these cash grab games end up being on those services, such as Skull and Bones with Ubisoft Connect or Redfall with Xbox Game Pass. And I really wouldn't be surprised if games like Rise of Ronin end up on PlayStation Plus soon. The problem is just as prices have gone up, greed has taken over, while quality control has gone down. Games like Alan Wake 2, which are phenomenal, that I think deserve to be a $70 price tag game, Released at only $50, making them step out the box and look better than other games they are competing with around the same launch date. I don't care about Ubisoft or Assassin's Creed, but even Assassin's Creed Mirage released for $50, and you have to at least respect the studio for charging a fair price. Once again, I don't mind games being $70 as long as they're good quality and finished products. You don't have to spend $70 on a game, you can boycott it by just not buying the game, or you could, you know pie rat it for legal reasons this is a joke um i just stay away from pre-ordering games sound days and if it looks remotely not even worth the price tag i just refuse to buy it until it's on sale i don't understand how studios like ea or i shouldn't say it, but i guess publishers like ea and activision just get away with charging these 70 dollars games that either come out unfinished or just recycled content or just loaded with microtransaction. It's not just those two studios. It's a lot more. There's been a lot of disappointment games. But at the same time, there's been a lot of good games like Baldur's Gate 3 and Spider-Man, which I think deserve that same dollar price tag. But hopefully, with the $70 being the new standard, we can hopefully kind of get better quality games. I can only hope so. But thank you guys for listening. This was Modern Video Game Prices in a nutshell, I guess. So yeah, like and subscribe and let me know what you think about the gaming industry as a whole right now.